Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as usual, let's go over Tesla and let's go over the market. Let's figure out what is happening today and what we can expect from it, what we can dissect from it uh, moving forward, of course. Uh, pretty, I mean, tomorrow's the last day of the month and next week is a big week because over the weekend on Sunday, we have Tesla's delivery numbers, which is going to be a pretty big one uh, and see, you know, how it affects, uh, you know, the way Tesla's moving because I do think it will affect it. Uh, in fact, I think Tesla's actually... The TSLA specifically is waiting for that. But let's get into it. If you enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, if you, of course, enjoy the video. And, you know, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. And again, my membership section is live down below if you're interested for $2.99 a month, where I share all my intraday thoughts on Tesla as it's moving throughout the day. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. So Tesla, uh, pretty much flat on the day, going up 0.5%, closing at $257 and a half, essentially. Uh, for the day, which compared to the market, um, you know, it's uh, outperforming tech, but kind of underperforming spy. So it's kind of like in between, I would say, honestly, I would say it's roughly with the market, give or take nothing too substantial for the most part. And yeah, honestly, a pretty much of a pretty, pretty nothing burger day for the most part. And I say that because, well, we're pretty much doing what we did yesterday, essentially the exact same day as yesterday. You know, yesterday we had a massive, you know, rally, of course, here, but, you know, pretty much went all the way up came back down, just essentially went sideways. Today, same thing, we started the day off all the way up, had a false breakout, came back down, had a false breakdown, and then we essentially just went sideways for the rest of the day. So not a whole lot happening here, in all honesty, right? And I do think this is uh, mainly because Tesla, TSLA, is waiting for deliveries on Sunday. That is going to be a big thing, and I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow is fairly sideways as well. But with that being said, if tomorrow happens to be a green day, which I'll discuss the major levels I'm looking at right here to determine, you know, further upside or downside movement. But if tomorrow is a green day, uh, I'll be a little bit more skeptical, skeptical going into the weekend. If it's a red day, I'll be a lot less skeptical, skeptical going into the weekend. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, let's figure it out. So what's going to happen? What, what can we expect moving forward? So. Uh, for the most part, and I said this in my membership section pretty much throughout the whole day, how the most important levels for me right now are, as you can see, 254-ish, give or take, right? About 254-ish, because you can see a lot of wicks down here, a lot of buying pressure coming in here. But on the flip side, a lot of selling pressure coming out all the way up here between 258 to $260 per share, roughly, right? A lot of selling pressure, a lot of buying pressure. The bulls and the bears, it's literally like, this is quite literally a battlefield that we're watching right now. And we're pretty much just going straight sideways with the volume today being a little bit on the lower side. You can see nothing too substantial whatsoever. De definitely pretty low volume with no real victor in my opinion today as well. So it's hard to say if this is a good or a bad thing really. Um, until pretty much one of these levels breaks, right? Essentially, if we break above essentially 258 to 260 and we start closing at least like a one hour candle uh, above those levels, um, at the very least above 258, ideally above 260-ish, but 258 we can say for starters, you know, then I think the, the bulls win and I think we continue making our way up to the next level, which will be 265, which of course is a major level for me for, you know, reasons I said before, such as, you know, that is a level we got rejected at several times before, which also ended up following through with pretty, you know, sizable movement to the downside. And on top of that, if we do break above 265, that means that we have officially set a higher high in this overall so far bearish movement to the bottom right here that we had, you know, lower lows, lower highs. This officially would set a higher higher low um oh, sorry, a higher high and that would be a, a very good sign so for instance it could be something like this right let's say let's say this is the bullish side it breaks out it comes up here moves up somewhere to around here let's say makes this higher high uh give or take right it could be a little bit higher but somewhere you know around this 370 or 270 area let's just say for you know demonstrational purposes i guess right and then from there of course naturally from here you'll still get some sort of downside but then you know the point is we can get a downside and we can potentially set a higher low compared to this higher low over here let's say and go even higher. You know what I mean? That's kind of the idea, right? You'll kind of break this downward trend is the point I'm trying to make here, which would be good for the bulls, right? Now, the bears, of course, what they want to see is pretty much the opposite. They want to see this to be a lower high, right? They want to see this continuation to be formed, right? Where it's, you know, we set a high here, we set a low here, then we set a lower high right here, came down, set a lower low, and then up here, if we set a lower high, then ideally what they want is to go even lower to set a lower low down over here, in my opinion, one more time to around 230, maybe even 225. That's what the bears want to see. So that's what essentially the two sides, in my opinion, right now are battling out right over here, probably waiting for deliveries to come out over the weekend and see, you know, what actually happens with that. This is also a bit of a confusing situation here. And there's a few things to discuss, right? It, there's just like an inception of patterns happening right now which makes this whole situation that much more confusing which i do think is really shown by these candles i mean the, this is just 
two days in a row of one hour candles pretty much of just pure like like wickness right a lot of wicks on the candles you can see a lot of wicks on both sides whether it's buying pressure or, or selling pressure a lot of indecision there and this is why this is a very confusing area so like i said the other day right uh, in my opinion we are still potentially forming this inverted cup and handle right we're now this is the handle right here and arguably you can make the, you can make the argument that the fact that we did break down out of the handle being this kind of you know kind of greenish line if you will right where we kind of bounced off of it several times even yesterday and then we had a beautiful rally this morning ended up being a trap a bull trap and then we rallied back down under it kind of came up to retest us sort of here unsuccessfully and then we kind of went downwards from there and more or less sideways right so that's number one that's kind of the bearish side the bullish side however is the fact that we have potentially also uh, broken out of this bull flag where ever since this uh, high over here and we started doing this downtrend you can see we were kind of in this downward channel we kind of tried to break out over here and we finally did and now we're kind of retesting it so far successfully and now we're sort of breaking out of it so there's a bit of conflicting patterns going on there right so you got a bullish pattern here you have a bearish pattern right inside of the bullish pattern essentially they're like conflicting and it's almost a matter of like which one wins and i think that pretty much plays out with what i said about this whole congestion period you know finally breaking through one way or the other right keep in mind this is also pretty much exactly dead smack in the middle of the 0.5 fibonacci retracement which like i said um is going to be another major level to break above right in my opinion right because again assuming this is nothing more than a simple dead cat bounce this 0.5 level like i said yesterday is a phenomenal level to reject at for the bears so unless we can break above that you know it's also something else to consider that the bears in my opinion are winning until the bulls can at least break through this 0.5 level in which case i think the bulls will start winning instead but at the moment i would say the bears are slightly winning only because we're still below that 0.5 level the bulls really want to break above that level to see further moves to the upside um, uh, again to 265 and potentially even as high as 280 to retest that and then if we break above that maybe even 300 right that's kind of the main battle right now now again i personally think that you know it's the deliveries is what we're waiting for here that's that's the main catalyst that i think can you know bring this up or down really so it'll be pretty interesting to see and the final thing i'll mention that a viewer very rudely by the way brought up which I'll, uh, there's something i do want to discuss after this but um probably not even a viewer just someone that happened to be there but nonetheless talked about Something I did miss, which you can definitely make an argument that there is a bit of a, you know, smaller, uh, oops, uh, let's do it on a different time frame, actually. It's a little easier to draw it, right? A bit of a smaller cup and handle here. But the issue with this now is that this handle is way too long for how large or for how small this cup is. This handle is way too long for how small this cup is, right? So at this point, it's like makes me wonder if it's even validated anymore. I think it's completely irrelevant now, mainly because regardless of this is a cup and handle pattern or not, this is a very small one, regardless it doesn't really change the fact that this congestion period needs to play out and whatever happens to this congestion period whether we break again 258 and the bulls win or we break below 254 and the bears win that that's going to have to play out regardless so to me it's relevant of this cup and handle pattern this is the most important part to look at this congestion right whichever breaks first that is going to be the movement of the move that we see and the way I'm playing it right now is I did enter positions that I ended up selling them today as well uh, I was playing a, a bit of this you know volatility here but pretty much sold for like 0.2% of a loss because I just don't feel comfortable holding it right now. The risk versus reward is extremely questionable here, in my opinion. And the main thing I'm waiting for right now is to see a better confirmation. If we break out to the upside, fantastic. I'll buy it and then I'll ride it up. If we uh, break down to the downside, we you know make uh, at the very least you know another visit to 240s, if not all the way down to 230 fantastic i'll be buying that dip as well so you know what i mean that's kind of the way i'm playing it i might enter a small position end of day tomorrow depending on how it looks just so i have some exposure to the upside but th that's just kind of how the way i like to play it. but that's kind of overall what i am seeing right now with tesla in my opinion it, again i personally view this as nothing more than a patience and a waiting game let this play out let the direction be shown no reason to just guess and throw darts blindly let the direction tell you let the market tell you which way it wants to go you know what i mean and i'm per personally just perfectly okay waiting for that to happen um and yeah also the last thing i want to mention very quickly is i see some comments <laughs> People think that I'm trying to spread FUD or like fear or, you know, whatever, because I want people to sell. So Tesla goes down. So I get to buy shares cheaper. Guys, if you think I can move the market, especially a stock like Tesla, especially a stock like Tesla, if you think I can move it, you shouldn't be trading. You should, I, you should absolutely forget trading exists and move on and do something else with your life. Because I promise you, I can't move the market. Not even close. Not even if I wanted to, right? Just I want to make that very, very clear. I only say what I personally see 
whatever that is. I don't care if you get mad about it. I don't care if you're happy about it. To me, it's completely irrelevant. I don't mean that in a rude way. It's just a fact, right? I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here. I'm just here to talk about what I see. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. It's really that simple, but I can't move the market. Believe me, I wish I could. I absolutely can't, nor will I ever be able to, especially a stock like Tesla. You'd have to be completely delusional to think that's what I uh, am trying to do and especially can do. So just want to throw that out there just in case people are still wondering, because I've seen some comments about that, which I just think is hilariously ridiculous. But all that being said, that's kind of what I am seeing. Again, just a patience game, letting the market decide this direction until this congestion period plays out. And I think from there, we'll get a better idea as to what will happen. You can see it's kind of starting to get a little bit tighter over here. And uh, yeah, I do think a big move is definitely forming up. And I think it's going to happen probably, if not tomorrow, definitely Monday after the deliveries on Sunday. So I guess uh, we'll I'm just waiting for that and uh, yeah, I'll play whichever the, the direction the market tells me Tesla wants to move. So otherwise, thank you all so much for watching. And of course, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.